Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cool Conversations with author Kennedy Ryan. And before we begin, we want to congratulate you for being USA best-selling author. That is such a wonderful congratulations. Yeah, I remember actually. I thought you were on Instagram when you received the news. Yes, I was literally. I'm um, so the, the book is Queen Move. And I was doing, in conjunction with the release of Queen Move, I was doing Queen Chats. So I was just basically having these conversations with women I admire, you know, and I wanted them to share their wisdom and all this stuff. So I was doing one of those with um, Lucy Score, an author named Lucy Score. And we were in the middle of our Instagram Live. And I was, of course, on my phone. And all of a sudden, I started getting all these notifications, like, uh, you know, all of these text messages. And I was like, what is going on? And um, I saw one from, I have two publicists, one of them, Tia and Jen, and I got a, a text message from Tia that said, I told you so, because she said, you're gonna make USA Today. And I was like, I don't think I am. She was like, I think you are. She was right, you know? And she, she just said, I told you so. And so I tried to go back into the, I tried to go back into the chat and pretend that nothing was going on and nothing was happening. And then I think Lucy may have seen, and we were both like, it happened, and when I just broke down crying, <laughs> I was like, yeah, "I tell you that um, this has been a. I think that your your journey has been so encouraging to other authors as well. Really, uh, authors that are in publishing for a minute, and authors who are also new to the game. Yeah, uh, because it has given people life." It's giving them energy and in this day of negativity, which I like to dwell on the positivity. I thought Siobhan was in my feelings this morning. Today's my son's 23rd birthday. And he's oh, happy happy mom birthday. Happy it's your birthday, birthday too. Really? Oh, and I have to say, the day you birthday. gave birth. It's the day you gave birth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's my first, that's my first baby. <laughs> and then I was looking at my planner and I seen all these things I had this week for my tax. For LCA, and I'm not able to have LCA due to COVID 19. Yeah. So I'm feeling today. And then I told Siobhan, and I was thinking about, well, you know what? At least this evening I get to interview the awesome Kennedy Ryan. So oh. all of my thank so you so much. And I'm so excited about I'm so excited about the virtual LCA. Like I am, I'm excited too. Uh, but you know, as you know, as bookheads, we get to generally talk and be with each other. So yeah. uh, it's like a family reunion, but I'm still enjoying this uh, aspect of being able to talk to you. Now, Queen Move. Yeah. We were discussing prior to actually coming on live, your books, not just this book, but your books have so many layers. Uh, and they deal with unconventional topics, but these topics are very timely and conventional um, to the lives of many people. Yeah. And I can tell from your writing, you are an intentional writer. Very uh, much so. Yeah, you build these topics in hopes of maybe enlightening, encouraging, and informing others. Yeah. So that's my take on it. Uh -huh. But let me hear your take on okay. why you write. You know, it's so funny because probably because I'm a preacher's kid, uh, because both my parents are pastors. I, pro I talk about writing in a way that it, it seems like my parents are pastors. I see writing as a mission. You know, I see writing as missional for me. I see it as a calling. You know, I don't just see it as a job or a vocation. I believe I was put on the earth. At least part of my purpose is to tell stories. And so um, for me, every time I sit down, I want to know, is there something? Of course, there's going to be, you know, kissing and there's going to be swooning and there's going to be romance. But I'm always asking myself, what else? You know, I'm always asking myself, is there something that needs a light shown on it? Is there something that I can talk about that will challenge readers to think about something maybe they haven't considered before or to reconsider something they thought they already had a well-formed opinion about? Um, you know, look at something in a different way. And so every book I approach, at least for the last few years, has felt like every time is like a new mission, if that makes sense. Um, for, you know, for example, with with the All the King's Men duet, as I was researching, I knew that it, there was climate change. You know, there was um, reform to our political system. There was, and one thing is I, I do a lot of interviewing. Um, and some of that is, 
probably my journalism background and have it doing a lot of freelance writing and interviews, but it's a huge part of my process. And as I was interviewing, um, the heroine is Native American. Um, and as I was interviewing indigenous women for that book, they, so many of them kept talking about um, missing and murdered indigenous women. And yeah. so that had never been a part of my real cognizance. I mean, I knew it vaguely, but every woman I talked to brought it up. And I was like, this is something that's like very important that is not being talked about enough. It's not on people, you know, it's not in the front of people's minds. And so it worked its way, it hadn't before, but it worked its way into the plot as I started listening to these women talk about the impact that that issue was having on their community. And um, so that's the kind of thing I have as a writer, I have to feel compelled. I have to feel like this is the story I'm supposed to be telling right now. And um, and I have to feel like it's something that, you know, that's gonna touch people. I, I, I hope, that's my hope. You're in a league of what I call conscious romance. Now, I of course, I say that. Yeah, now, now, of course we get the fire, the heat. We have the yes. HA, we have all those components, but I'm also interested in the story. I'm not just, I'm not just interested in the plot, because yeah. I think it's two different things. I'm interested in the story mm -hmm. and how the story unfolds and yeah. what I can learn from yeah. the story. Uh, and I think that that's what is drawing you to so many different uh, readers to your stories. And I love the fact that, you know, in this age where um, sometimes we see a lot of negativity across the boards, across various platforms, across various industries, you have a very diverse following. Sure. Very. Um, I think that I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed yeah. to have such a diverse readership. Like my readers are everything, they're, <laughs> you know? and they're they're all over. I they mean, are. they're really global. And I also think that that helps to build bridges. And oh, this day and time, uh, because you know you've been interviewed by uh, various people, various demographic, uh, various interests, and I think that helps to build bridges. And also, it also helps to um, some of the uh, negative connotations that come along with romance. Uh, also helps. I think it helps uh, people to see uh, the genre, which is yes. very substantial, yes. very concrete, very. Uh, I hate to make pun a, a pun, but very literal. Yeah. Um, and it helps to give a lot of credence and relevance. The more that you're seeing in various platforms, you know, yeah. you and um, Miss Bev, Miss Jackson, and there are a lot of different authors. So you're gonna give Sarah the entire name, uh, but there are a lot of different authors: Alicia Go, Sarah, uh, Vanessa, Alana Jackson. Hey, I never, we are very, very blessed right now to have an abundance of Black women writing such amazing stories. Like amazing. I can't even name them all. Alexandria House. Like oh, just, yes. I love Alexandria. I love and, and, yeah. and Alexandria. I just love her spirit, and you engage in it in, in that same spirit, and it comes along in your writing. Now, when we're talking about your characters. Hey, Kimba, she's such a force. And a lot of the women that you write about, even though when we all have our faults, uh, we may have their faults, they each have this um, innate force yeah. that keeps propelling them. Yeah. Um, why is it important for you to showcase, not just showcase, but write and tell stories that feature strong women? Um, I think there, there are a few threads that run through everything I write. Activism is one of them and feminism, you know, feminism, not in the sense of how people, how culture tries to tell us what being a feminist is, but feminist in the sense that feminism is about choice. It's about you deciding what your path is going to be and pursuing it. Even when someone says you shouldn't or that you're not good enough or that you're not qualified mm -hmm. enough. And I, I like to show women who are aspirational, yeah. um, you know, women who have dreams and who pursue them. Um, who are ambitious, but also I like to show women who are compassionate because for me, when we talk about power, because this um, Kimba, you first see Kimba in a book called um, In the All the Kings Men Duet, which is the one I was talking about earlier, which features a Native American heroine. Um, and they basically, it's a, it's a book about power. You know, she starts this, um, I, really a scandal was a huge inspiration for this whole duology, the two books and Kimba. So they, although you can read 
queen move without reading those two books. That's where we first meet Kimba is in those two books. So Kimba and her best friend Lennox start a political consulting firm and their mission is to put people in power who will advance their convictions. Yeah. And those convictions are around compassion and advocacy for marginalized groups. And so it's the white hat, the gladiator, you know, if you ever watch Scandal, it's that kind of feel. And so when you talk about power, I think that power is a waste if you don't leverage it to help people who don't have it. If wow. you don't leverage it to help people who have mm -hmm. less you do and aren't as advantaged as you are, then power is wasted. And so that's the whole, I love playing with this sense of power um, in women because most of my most of my characters when they it, when they have power i don't want you just to see them as powerful women i want you to see them as women who when they have power they know what to do with it they leverage it to help other people and so um that's really important to me and a lot of people are like oh they're always career women that i think that's a warped view you know sometimes that we have a feminism is that there are these women who you know they don't care about maybe you know their homes as much and they have to work outside of the home I'm working now on a story, it'll be further down the road, where it's a powerful woman, she is badass. Oh, can we curse? I, should I? I do it all the time. <laughs> You're that's your mama. Powerful, badass, you know, she's a stay-at-home mom. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I like to take people's ideas of, of what a thing is, of what a woman can be, and turn it upside down, you wow. know, and challenge it and say, oh, so you don't think that a stay-at-home mom is powerful? Okay, I'm gonna show you a stay-at-home mom who runs her home like an enterprise, you know, who sees her mission as her children, you know, and that's just as powerful as someone like Kimba who sees electing the president as powerful. Do you know what exactly. I mean? It's tapping into what is your personal mission? What is your personal calling? What is your personal purpose? And pursuing that, you know, without compromising, without fail. And that to me is powerful. And those are the women that I wanna paint. And part of the reason I want to paint those is to inspire women in real life. Of course, these are fictional characters, but there's something inspiring about even seeing that on the page. Fictionally. And so I get this all the time. We say, you know, after I read this book, I changed this about my life. When I wrote Long Shot, which of course is such a difficult book, it is a very difficult book. It is. Book. I, it but is I, I want to say that for anyone who is not the opportunity to pick up a Kennedy Ryan book, I think Long Shot is a good book uh, to start with. And of course, the Queen, uh, the, the King Duet series, but and of course, the, the latest book. But long shot, the layers. We talked about layers and yeah. being conscious. And and I think Siobhan and I talked about this book briefly Sunday. And Siobhan, where do you see her as far as an artist? I think you're like an artist who keeps painting pictures for us. Where where do you see her writing as an artist? Oh wow. <laughs> so my first book of Kennedy's was Hot Shot. So I didn't read Long Shot, I read Hot Shot. Oh wait, wait, mm -hmm. or hookshot, 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 yeah. hookshot, yes. Hookshot. yes. Yeah. Okay, so and then when I read Queen Move, you could tell the difference. I mean, I love both, you know, your writing, but I could tell more how powerful Kimba, you know, Kimba was, and I didn't read the other King, the um, yeah, yeah. before they were oh, yeah. So, I mean, I could tell the advancement in how in, you know, how it was. You know, I'm not gonna say better because <laughs> reading Queen Move, Kimba's Kimba and Ezra stayed with me days after. I wanted more. I don't know oh, what wow. I could have gotten, but I wanted more. <laughs> I, do a, I do have a bonus epilogue coming. Yeah. I have a bonus okay. epilogue. So you'll get two more chapters. And when I do bonus epilogues, they're like 50 pages. You know, oh, they're not okay. just like a little scene, it's like about 25 more pages from each character's point of view. So you'll get another chapter from Kimba and you'll get another chapter from Ezra and it will take us deeper into their lives. So I do those for pretty much all of my books now. Ever since Longshot, I started with Longshot, every book since Longshot has bonus epilogues, so. I don't know if I want to read that because it's going to make me want them even more. No, <laughs> it's, the, it's the problem like with us, you know, as every mm -hmm. you read something that's good and it sticks with you, you kind of like, okay, well, I can see this happening, this happening. And we don't want those characters to end, but we know, we, we know eventually they have to go to um, the big book in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but we still love them. And I think Shavana brought a good point. You should talk about power and you talk about power. And it seems that your books, as your writing has progressed, I mm -hmm. definitely agree with Shavana that uh, the power and the intensity of, of your storyline has just propelled. And it propels us. Uh, to think about different things and different topics. What yeah. are the topics that you feel that you may want to broach next without giving too much away? Yes. Um, there's, I think that there's something that I'm working on that I can't talk about very much, um, but it, it's a romance for sure, but it, um, it deals like a, the, the project that I'm working on, that stay-at-home mom, is in the series and so it's everything that i was talking about but it's also about um women reclaiming you know um sometimes getting lost in their families in their marriages in their whatever but women just really reclaiming their personhood and making sure mm -hmm. that even because we as women tend to take care of everybody yeah. else and we yeah. tend to put everybody first and a lot of times I'm very, very interested and I don't want to give too much away because I'm so excited about this. Ooh, I'm excited. Spill the tea, spill the tea. I can't spill all the tea. I'm just going to tip the pot over a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I am interested, the next, there's a series I'm working on. And a lot of times in romance, you you know, it's two people, they, they have a meet cute, they kiss, they date. I'm very, very interested in married couples. And so I have a series that I'm working on that, you know, all the couples are married. So it is really examining um, some of, all, you know, it'll be all kinds of issues that come up, but all in the context of married couples, couples who are already married. Because I think sometimes in romance, we see the happily ever after as the point of love, the wedding and the baby yeah. is the point of love. Well, what does it look like? What, well, let's, I want to, and not that, that, not that there's not any books that are doing this, but I'm interested in doing more of it myself is what about, okay, we got married, we had the kids. So the point of this book can't be to get married and have kids because we already got them. Yeah. You know, and so that's what I'm very interested in in the next phase of my writing is yeah. looking at mature people. If you'll notice, Kim and Ezra are in their late 30s. You yeah. know, they're 37 years old. I'm in Ezra has lived a life and he's still living his life. And what you're talking about is grown folks romance because, you know, Savannah and I, we, uh, we you mm -hmm. know, we're friends, we're, we're, we're reviewers, but we also live by eight minutes from each other. So, oh, that's awesome. So, as a couple, Siobhan <laughs> likes game night, so we do a lot of game night. But that's real, you know, honey, you know, you know, after you say I, I do and yes. you are paying mortgage, mm -hmm. honey, that's when the stuff happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's when the stuff yeah. And I think that, you know, I think that as a, a grown woman, I yeah. really would appreciate uh, like some grown woman stuff. Absolutely. You know, I most definitely would really appreciate I that. am very interested in writing about more mature characters, you know, and I'm in my 40s. So I, you know, I do, I have books where, you know, the heroine is in her 20s, you know, discovering. I have those books, and that's fine. But I really find myself. Um, digging into the stories where the heroine is in her 30s, approaching 40. Like Kimba, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want to give a whole bunch away, but, and it's pretty early in the book, but Kimba deals with perimenopause. Yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I, these are, these are really? not things that you're hearing mm -hmm. about in romance, mm -hmm. but it, it's real life. And it's, you know, wrestling with, wow, I'm in, I'm hitting perimenopause and I'm in my 30s. You know, that's early menopause, obviously. But I have given my whole life to my career and I don't have kids. What do I want to do about this? You know, wrestling with those kinds of questions. I'm very interested in that. So um, that's one of the things I'm working on, not to give too much away, but really focusing on more mature characters and marriage. You know, yeah. what these couples issues look like in the context of marriage. And um, there's some other things I'm really, and it before we even start all of the things that are happening now in the current climate, I was already preparing for a book that really deals with wrongful imprisonment and our broken justice system. And so I'll be writing that book too. Um, it carries, you know, it has a whole new complexion right now, but it's something that I've been interested in for a really long time. And I started, if, I don't know if you guys have read the grip, my grip series, have heard about my grip series, but my grip series deals with um, police brutality 
It deals with um, wrongful imprisonment. It deals with mass incarceration. So I started digging into some of those issues in the GRIP series, which is three books about one couple, um, as opposed to like uh, the Hoop series, which is three different full-length novels about three different couples. So the GRIP series is a trilogy about the same couple. And but I, So I started delving into some of that then, but I want to kind of crack it open a little bit more, but in an unexpected way. I think it'll be different than what, like as people are hearing me talk about it, they're probably like, oh, it's gonna be so heavy. You know, I don't, I don't think it, I think there will be elements of it because I tend to write weightier books, you know, books mm -hmm. that nobody's ever gonna say, Kennedy Ryan writes rom-coms. You know, that's not what I do. It's not her claim to fame, but, it, but <laughs> I think, as I said earlier, you have a conscious romance and you have a, a style. And I think that uh, perhaps um, a lot of people earlier uh, on their careers when they were mandated by certain publishing houses, uh, and maybe even so their readers to write in a certain style, even though they felt that they needed to break out, yeah, perhaps write more uh, heavier topics. Yeah. Uh, and I think that you have given encouragement to aspiring writers and um, writers who are well seasoned to explore and to give themselves the opportunities and give them the opportunities to do stuff because you have proven that you can write about serious topics and still have not only commercial success, yeah. but political success. Now, Savannah, what about Israel um, did you like? Ah, you I just ask. love Israel all the way from the time oh, I went to bed to the east. He was a baby in the bathtub. <laughs> but I think the, the, the part that I really liked him is when, I don't want to give any spoilers, so y'all close your ears yeah. if you ain't read the book. <laughs> Is when she got pregnant again and he was taking care of the new baby mm -hmm. and you know the child they already had. I felt that was very mature of him. Yeah. Because yeah. I I believe that whole relationship was mature because I don't believe that I could have been in there with her and she's with him and yeah. all of that. That was just like, yeah, drama yeah. thing. Yeah. That really was a very <laughs> moment and you were several. Don't, then, give it all away. don't give the spoil. Don't spoil. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have some Jerry Springer moments for for so for people who have not read the book yeah. or have not picked the book, you're gonna have some moments where you feel uh, it's a roller coaster of emotions. You're gonna laugh. You're gonna be shocked. Mm -hmm. You may mm -hmm. cry. Yeah. You may even say a couple yeah. words you'll find on a high school bathroom wall. <laughs> but <laughs> the of emotions yeah. that I felt when I read the book, and I called Siobhan, I was like, Siobhan, that was just an awesome book. Um, mm -hmm. you, and even though your books are lengthy, they don't really feel so because you keep uh, pushing the plot along and yeah, they're pretty the long. along until I'm yeah. trying to say, what's, going to next? what's going to happen next? Oh, I know yep. that didn't happen. Are you yep. serious? But that's what you do in your writing. That yep. thank you so much. And I, um, I really appreciate that. I really, really do. I um, one of you mentioned, um, and I don't want to give too much away again, like you were saying. But one of the things I really wanted to deal with in the book was blended families and a modern mm -hmm. structure and found family because so many of us now don't have the conventional family structure. And mm -hmm. I wanted to really dig into the complexity of managing a modern blended family structure. And so. And it's because, you know, know, on television, on reality television, you may mm -hmm. see a lot of discord and you may see profanity and flaw. Not to say that it can't occur, but yeah. you're you're showing how to navigate it in yeah. a mature way and sense. And where the children what are when I read yeah. that, yeah. That a lot of people who may be entering into situations, um, your book, this specific book for real, can make help people navigate through some of that mess because it's not an easy job to do. Nope. No, 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 it's not. It's definitely not. And I, um, that was definitely, and you know, I think that that's something that a lot of romance readers aren't used to, you know, because they want to see the man who maybe he's a single dad, but it's not complicated. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, mm -hmm. girl, that's, that's not life. Life is complicated. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, well, if he's a single dad, you know, there are some complications that can come with that because he's still attached to this whole other 
kind of family structure and just, but I didn't want to make it like drama in the sense of vilifying that of, you know, the other people involved, if that makes sense, like making them the bad guy. Maybe like well, one I'm going to tell you for a little bit, I'm not going to not give out a lot of information, <laughs> a lot of other spoilers. However, there was a certain young lady who I felt was trying to take advantage of Israel, and I called her out on a page or two. <laughs> I know exactly mm -hmm. what you're talking about. And I think that she's designed to function that way at that point in the story, because I also wanted to be real about those emotions that she's sorting through, you know? And I feel like she came around, you know, by the end of the book, we see them in a chord. As far as yeah. like, look, it's because, look, 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 because she had a boo thing. I was like, girl, go somewhere sit down. Exactly. Go somewhere all the way down. Yeah. Now, you know, it was one line in the story and I should have actually um, highlighted it, but it was when the mother was telling Kimba, and this is oh, yes. important, that you take care of everyone else. Yeah, you yeah. to take care of yourself. Yeah. And I, I yeah. felt that any woman who read that line will reflect. I reflect. I did some very deep self-reflection on line and I underlined it on my Kindle. That's why I look yeah. and underline everything and highlight yeah. it because it was very important because of women, as you said earlier, we often take care of everyone yeah. and we um often put ourselves not even on the back burner. We're not even on the stove. No, no. <laughs> We're not even on the stove. And I and, and that was such a um real point. And it was like a um it was a turning point in her life. Uh and it made her fess up to who she is and exactly what she yearned to do because she was trying to fill some mighty big shoes um from her father. And I think at that, it, it was at that, that point she realized, she looked around her and she saw all this happiness and love and she was not in the equation. What was going on in your mind when you wrote that scene? When I wrote which scene? Which scene? Well, Kimba's mom, I don't get a lot of weight, but when oh, she- yeah, yeah. Her, You're uh, talking about when they were at the event? Mm-hmm, at, at the, the event. event. I wanted her to, there were a few things because there's a earlier scene and I won't refer, you know, I won't give that away. But when she talks about how life is not, um, how love is not always tidy, you know, and how the test, mm -hmm. the test of true love is not that you never make mistakes, that you never make a mess, but do you stay to clean it up? You know, is it, do you clean that it up? Right. And so I think I wanted her to be processing all of that and how messy and difficult that journey was. But her mom basically asked her to look around at all the people who are benefiting from her hard work. You know, the the people she mm -hmm. had and her brother and her, you know, everybody the around. The president, her. the governor, the senator. Yeah. Like you elect yeah. the president, you elect the governor, you help your brother, your sister, you know, it's like everyone is thriving. When are you going to take care of your own happiness? And I just wanted, I wanted that to be pivotal for Kimba in that moment, because I knew, of course, that she and Ezra were going to end up together. Um, but you, you, it's hard to talk about without spoiling, but she, I really wanted her to have a strong sense of, I have my own dreams. I have my own goals. And this is a very difficult situation that I'm in the middle of. Um, and I have my own difficult situation that I'm taking care of. And I don't have the capability or I don't want to have to have the emotional capability of pursuing my dream, taking care of this problem that I have and also watching what's going on over here. You know what I mean? So she said, this is what I have to do for myself right now. Exactly. So many times women don't say, this is what I have to do for myself right now. And I'm going to block everything else out and I'm going to do it to take care of myself. And she did that. You know, and then she said, okay, I have gotten through this. I've gotten through this. I've taken care of this. Okay, I can breathe. You know, I can now revisit this situation that has a little more resolution to it than, and we're talking in code because I'm trying not to spoil it. <laughs> you know, now that things are resolved over here, now that I've done this, 
I can take a deep breath and I can re-engage. And I think sometimes we as women don't realize we don't have to do everything at one time. And we don't have to do everything on other people's terms. Yeah, we, we don't was, realize that. You know, that was Kimba saying, I want you. I want you, I want this, I want all of this, but I have terms. And these are my terms. And it's Ezra saying, I honor those terms. And I think one thing that I really like to do is a lot of times in romance, we have the alpha male, you know, who's very strong and you love that. You love powerful, strong men. But I one thing I really wanted to show with Ezra, Ezra is black and Jewish. And um, so he's a person of color. He's, a, you know, he's black and Jewish. I wanted to show um, a character who was a person of color, who was a father and who was nurturing and who, you know, and, and he was patient. Yes, and mm -hmm. we didn't see enough that connection between father and son as black men. Like we don't see that enough. That nurturing, um, that that compassion, that sensitivity, that softer, that tenderness between a father and a son. We don't see it enough. And even in what media shows us. And so I wanted to be really careful in this book with his character and with his son to show that, to show that really his son was the most important thing in his life and to show him being involved in the details. Like he's making sure that he takes his vitamins and he's making sure that he's not eating more than one dessert. And he's, you know what I mean? He's involved, he's involved in the bedtime rituals. You show, I wanted to show him presence. But not only that, he was not only involved in his son's life, he was very involved in the lives of other people around him. Yes. He was unapologetically caring. Yes. Uh, he was astute. He was smart. Yes. And he didn't apologize for being any of those things. Right. And I think often, especially in media, African American men, especially, uh, they are given a choice. You have to be yeah. one number two or number three yeah. and Israel decided he wanted to be all of these things yes yes and i think that that was uh, uh that that's very uh critical uh being that you have a very diverse readership yeah yeah uh, and that's what i, I love about the this, this story especially and i say i like the other stories i, I love the other of stories course. but this story being that you're showing an uh, african-american male with all of these characteristics and attributes that normally when you read a book that may have a, uh, a, a white uh, male character is already assumed. Yeah. Or, you see, or you read an article where you're looking at the news is already assumed where African-American males constantly are having to prove themselves. Yeah. And in this book, he didn't prove himself. What right. he did, he just showed he was being his very authentic self. I yeah. love it. Yes. And the thing that was really important for me is a lot of people who met Kimba in the All the King's Men duology, because she's very powerful. She's a force, you know, and people thought, well, gosh, she's she has to have a senator or a billionaire or, you know, whatever. And Ezra honestly, I thought she was going to be married out to a billionaire. I'm going to be right. I'm one of those people. Right. And Ezra's an educator, you know, and he's he. But the thing is, I wanted readers to see someone who is so completely secure in himself. He's not concerned if Kimba makes more money than him. He's not concerned if she's more famous than he is. She's not, he's not concerned if, he, you know, he wants her, he wants to be a safe place for her. He wants to be a landing place for her. He, he has this line where he talks about how he wants her to be able to take her armor off with him. And to be, because so many times we as black women, we're expected to be like strong all the time. And he's like, I know you're strong. I want you to feel like you can be vulnerable with me. And he was completely secure in who he was and not threatened by her success. And that was really important to me. Yeah. Uh, this book has so many uh, caveats, so many great points. Not only is it a great story, but it's a, uh, a great, great plot, but it also has so many, uh, it has a lot of deeper meanings and a lot of symbolism uh, when it comes to the, the charm is a symbolism to me, not gonna discuss it up, the charm is <laughs> symbolism. Uh, Kimba's job, even Atlanta, all of that, uh, there's certain symbolism because of certain things that have occurred. And it's, it's so important that your book came out in this very timely season. I know. I know. And it was as if, I mean, you wouldn't know, but it was as if that this book was like, just so, so they say, such a time and place of this. Yeah. Uh, and I think that it, not only is it entertaining, not only is it informative, 
but hopefully it will be also healing to different people. I hope so. I had so many readers because it was such an odd time to release a book, you know, with all with the protests and everything going on. Um, and just the outcry, honestly, for, you know, from our community, it was an odd time to release a book, you know, like, hi, buy my book. You know, you don't want to do that, you know, because the, there's a lot more important things going on than your book. And so it felt like, wow, this is a weird time to release a book. And there was so much support for the book. And I got so many messages from readers saying, with everything going on, this is exactly what I needed, you know, and this helped me process some of it. I didn't even expect. I mean, I, I didn't expect that at all. But they were like, we, you know, I feel like this book released exactly what it was supposed to. And um, I just, I always just kind of trust that everything's going to happen as it's supposed to. That's, I think, a part of faith. And so um, that's how I feel about this book is that it came, we could not, we chose that release date, uh, you know, a year yeah. ago, <laughs> you know, so we couldn't have anticipated that it would come out now. I just think it's, um, it was supposed to. Well, well I know that I'll, I'm six minutes over our time. I know you're extremely busy. You've had several interviews today, but I'll be remiss if Shavana, would you like to say something or have a comment uh, prior to us leaving the awesome Kennedy Ryan for this evening? Well, I really enjoyed the book. I did have a question, but now I can't even remember it. <laughs> I should have wrote it down. But I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed speaking to you. And I did watch your lives with the queens. I watched some of them. I didn't get to watch all of them. And I enjoyed all of them. Y'all were so just, you were such a fan, girl. And then, I totally was. Yeah, so I, I enjoyed totally. that. So, and it's good to see authors normal basically. Oh, you I were in the middle of your move and you was like, my hair, I don't care. You know, I love that. <laughs> I, I don't know how to be anything but normal. You know, I mean, people, like you said, I think before we got on, you were like, you're so down to earth. And I was like, why wouldn't I be? Like, how how could I not be? Yvonne, girl, look, look, I'm I'm I don't care. Like I told her, I said, girl, I know people sold two books and two of them to their moms. They, they, they barely speak anymore. So I, 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 I said, me, you better check me. <laughs> I have no heirs, no reason to do any of that. So thank you. I just had you move to Atlanta before we got to, um, you know, meet you in person because you were Charlotte right up the road. And no. now, I mean, you're just a little bit further up the road, but. We're quicker to come to Charlotte than Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> Before we leave, I do want uh, Kennedy is an advocate uh, for students and families who have loved ones with autism. And she does these awesome fundraisers. She talks mm -hmm. about it all year long. Yeah. So I also would like for you to uh, talk about how we can get involved oh, in cool. the fundraising aspect. Okay, so each year, um, for those who may not know, my son has autism, um, Miles. He is, he's actually 19 now, and he got his diagnosis when he was two years old. So we've been at this for a long time. Um, and I actually, I'm just now, I've always, as soon as Miles was diagnosed, I knew I needed to do something, like do something for him. But I also felt like this isn't just about me. And so I started a foundation for families who have children with autism in Atlanta. And I actually, I started that nonprofit and I ran it for about 13 years. And then that was before I got my first book deal, you know? And so once I got a book deal and then I started having deadlines and then things really picked up for me, I realized I couldn't do both things, but I still wanted to do something that was advocating, that was raising money, that was still engaging my heart in the autism community. And so we phased out the nonprofit and we started something that is specifically around books, which is in, it's in rhythm with what I have to do in my life right now. It doesn't feel like it's this other whole avenue. It's in rhythm with what I do. And so a fellow author of mine, Ginger Scott, she has um, a nephew who has autism and she's been an autism advocate and worked with autism organizations for years. She and I came together and we started something called Lift for Autism. And it's a book auction that happens every um, April. April is Autism Awareness Month. And so we always have a, a charitable partner. And this year our charitable partner was Culture City. We raised, I think, $53,000, which awesome. is awesome. amazing. And so all of that money, this year, we've done it the last five years, I think. 
This year, we raised money specifically for autism families who were struggling financially during COVID. Awesome. And so we raised like $53,000. In a week, over half of that had already been given out, you know, in scholarships to autistic families who were struggling financially because of the pandemic. And that was just, I mean, that just was like, that's touchdown for me is to see the money that the book community raised because it's an auction. So people, so authors and um, bloggers and anybody really donates, um, they donate books. We had audio narrators donate Zoom calls. We had authors donate Zoom calls. Usually we have um, organizers donate tickets. Like if, like if you were to yeah. donate tickets to the LCA, but mm -hmm. then, of course we didn't have those because everything was canceled, but we made up for it with all of like all authors and all narrators offering Zoom calls. So all those things, were people were bidding on those things and um, we raised $53,000. I think it was 53. Around That's $50 awesome. dollars, um, doing that. So uh, we do that every year. And it's liftforautism.com. If you go to lift, right. the number four, lift the number four for autism.com. So, now, Candy, how can people connect with you? Uh, Facebook, social oh, media, yeah. website? Facebook, I mean, Facebook, um, I'm on Twitter, <laughs> um, Instagram at Kennedy Ryan One. And when you go to act, when you go to Instagram, which is at Kennedy Ryan one, all my stuff is there. Like, you know, it, it, it can link you to everything, to my books, to, you know, all of everything. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook group, you know, if you, and I'm there like every day, literally every day I'm in my Facebook group. So that's where I spend most of my um, direct kind of social connecting time with readers. Um, you know, so. And I just want to say, you know, some people uh, listening or viewing may say, oh, well, a lot of people may have had a lot of issues during COVID, especially financial issues during COVID-19. But when you have a child or a loved one on the autism spectrum, daycare, oh. uh, care is extremely not costly, but you have to be very mindful because everyone is not trained uh, depending on where that child, that person is on the spectrum to take care of that person. Yeah. A lot of agencies, I have friends who work for various agencies, they were closed during this period of yeah. time. So it makes it very hard for parents yeah. or caretakers. I, I don't know if people really realize how, I mean, like you said, COVID's hard on everybody, but for our families, it is especially difficult because most of our kids are in programs, you know, in school. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And when that's disrupted, the routine is disrupted. It's so difficult. Oh, yes. so, you know, it's like they need structure, they need routine, they need Jeez. And we haven't been able to give them that to the same degree um, as usual. And so for a lot of our kids, it's like, you know, they, they're they having meltdowns, they are, you know, just experiencing disruptions. And so, you know, uh, we're doing as much as we can. I know for my son, it's been that way, I'm yeah. sure. You know, autism families are doing the best they can to provide those things they need. So please uh, reach out in your communities. I know a lot of people aren't aware because, you know, we all uh, have our various struggles and obstacles. But please reach out to organizations in your community and see how you can best serve um, not just students, but families with autism. Once again, I'd like to thank Kennedy Ryan and the wonderful Shavana Portrayal for joining me this evening. If you have not had the opportunity to purchase Queen Moo, please do so. Oh, I love that cover. I uh, love that cover. I want the book. <laughs> I, want the, I, want the, I want that cover. Yeah, I want the big book. All right. Yeah. Well, thank everyone for joining and chiming in and have a wonderful blessed week and remember to stay safe people thank the you bye bye, bye. bye <laughs> all right i'm gonna pop out